Napier's methods for building these logarithmic tables involved quite complicated methods using ratios. Now, most thinkers of that day were busy making calculations for other discoveries, and they didn't dive into the source of these tables. They just loved the fact that they made their work much easier and faster. And for this reason, it took more than a hundred years before people started to figure out that these logarithmic tables were actually exponents in backwards format. All this time, and they finally realized that logarithmic tables have many more uses. We just need to recognize them as the opposite or inverse of exponentials. And rather than being able to say that we're simply studying inverse exponents or inverse powers, we're stuck scaring advanced math students by saying we're going to study logarithms. And then we smile as they squirm at such a big scary looking unit title. Right? You've been there. Well, now you know. Logarithms, or logs, are simply inverse exponents. Here's an example of an exponential relation. 2 to the power of 3 equals, well, we remember 2 to the power of 3 is just 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8. And if we were to convert this into our log form, we'd keep the same base, the 2, and we'd switch the 3 and the 8. So in our log form, it would be log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Recognizing this conversion will lead to new tools for us. So let's make sure that we can adapt between these forms. 3 to the power of 2 equals, well, 3 times 3 is 9. Now, converting this to log form, well, pause and see if you can think of this one. Well, same base, that is the 3, and switching the 2 and the 9, we would have log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Recalling that logarithm was kind of a strange name that we ended up with, thinking more in terms of powers, we could say the power that would cause a base 3 to get to 9 would be 2. So, Going from there, what if we were asked to determine these logs? Log base 4 of 16. Well, pause and see if you can get this one. So thinking, the power that would cause a base 4 to be 16 would be, well that is, the same base but switching the 16 and the unknown, and we can see that it would take a power of 2. Let's try another. Log base 10 of 100. So pause and give this one a try. So we're thinking the power that would cause a base of 10 to get to 100 would be, well, let's see, the same base but switching the 100 and the unknown, and it would be a power of 2. Trying another. Pause and give this one a try. Log base 5 of 5. And we're thinking the power that would cause a base 5 to get to 5, well, the same base but switching the 5 and the unknown, well, 5 to the power of 1 would give us 5. Try another. Log base 2 of 1 half. Hmm, that's a little tricky. Pause and see if you can figure this one out. Thinking the power that would cause a base 2 to get to 1 half would be, well, we have to think about a negative exponent here, right? And we recall that 2 to the power of negative 1 would give us that 1 half. So now that you understand the basics of logarithms, you can impress your friends and family by telling them that you're busy working on a unit called logarithms. And those who haven't done advanced math courses will look at you with scared but impressed eyes. Only now you know it's just a fancy way of saying that you know how to inverse exponential expressions. Nice.